Hi, I'm Harriet, and today I'm going to be going through SQL cells. We're going to look at what they are, how to create them, and how to format them. Here you can see a couple of SQL cells. SQL cells are so fundamental to count, and it's really hard to use count without using at least a few SQL cells. They're how we add data from our database to our canvas, build up our analysis, and are so really important concept to understand. How do you create a SQL cell? So there's four main ways of creating a SQL cell. And my favorite is by using the data bar on the left. You can add data from the data bar, either by dragging in the table that you're after or by clicking plus and it'll add the data straight to your canvas. Two, you can add a cell directly from a previous cell by clicking here. Three, you can use the toolbar at the bottom and under cell, there's lots of different cell types, but the one we're after is SQL cell and add it in here. And finally, using a shortcut. So if you click forward slash, you can then place a cell wherever you'd like. Great. So up here, we've got the two SQL cells that we added from the sidebar on the left. And you can see a line of SQL and also up here, the cell name. You can call a cell whatever you want. So for example, here, I might call this one tracks. I'd really recommend to call this something sensible so that if anyone else comes into your canvas, it's easy to understand. The cell name is what you use when you reference the cell anywhere else. So for example, if we create a cell down here, you can see that cell C is referencing this cell up here by its name, tracks. You can combine data from multiple cells together, as you'd expect. So for example, left join B using artist ID. And then if you click tab, it will autocomplete. And to run the cell, you either click command enter, the run button here, or if you make any changes to your SQL and then click out of the cell, the cell will automatically run. Something important to note about SQL cells is that they're reactive. So if I make a change up here to a parent cell, for example, change the limit to 20, all cells below that in the stream will automatically update. So you saw there that cell C updated as well. This is the same with names. So for example, if we change the cell name up here to artist, we get the option to update all dependent cells. And now you can see in cell C that it's referring to artists instead of its previous name. Okay, now we know how to create cells, let's go through how to format them. Formatting a cell, you've got a couple of options over here in the design bar, or some options above the cell. Let's start with the design bar. You can show or hide your inputs of the cell, clicking here. And this is great if you wanna hide your SQL if you're sharing your canvas with people that possibly aren't so SQL literate. You can format your cell like this, which is great if you wanna keep your SQL clean so it's easier for other people to understand. Or here's an option to split out your CTs. This is great if you come to the canvas with a long piece of SQL, possibly with lots of, lots of nested CTEs, something like that, and you wanna debug it and see what's happening in each CTE. You can click to split it out, and now you see each CTE is a different cell. Above that, you've got cell name and cell title. Cell name we've previously discussed, it's what you use to reference that cell. And we've also got cell title. This has no effect on the code itself. It's more for viewers to make your canvas neater and easier to understand. So for example, you might wanna hide your SQL, add a title, and now the canvas looks a lot cleaner. And finally, above that, we've got data source. One of the great things about the canvas is that you can have loads of different types of data sources in one place. And so over here, you can select which data source you want this cell to be referencing. Now, if we head over to the cell itself and look at the options above the cell, again, we've got hide or show input. You can force run the cell at any point. You can add an alert that sends the data from this table either to Slack or to email, or you can download a CSV. And finally, in the cell itself, you can change the size of the input if you want to show more or less or change the size of the cell itself if you want to be able to see more of the table all at once. And that's it. Hopefully you now feel like you've got a better understanding of SQL cells and how to make them. Understanding SQL cells is a really important first step to breaking into the rest of the cell types. So now go ahead and check out the visual cells and control cells videos to learn more about those cell types. Thanks for watching.